Awesome. Okay. <laughs> Hi, everyone. My name is Taylor Etchen, and I serve as a career coach with the Bearcat Promise Career Studio within the Division of Experience Based Learning and Career Education. I particularly am assigned to support uh, ANS natural science and social science students, as well as psychology students. My son is Forrest in the background. He also is wanting to make an appearance. Um, I apologize, but I'm really happy to be here and, and I'm sharing this evening with you all. Awesome. Mary Helen, do you want to go, go next? Sure. Hi, Mary Helen Millar. Um, I too work in the um, Department of Experience Based Learning and Career Education. I um, work with the job development team. So we are working with employers across the country and sometimes internationally to help find co op positions, um, internship positions, and full time positions for UC students um, across all majors. And um, and and hopefully once you graduate, you'll use us as a resource as well. So I'm happy to be here to chat with you all. All right. Hey, thanks, Mary Helen. Um, Susie Mahoney. I also work in experience based learning and career education. I'm a faculty member, so I teach professional development courses for our ANS students and some of our um, co-op programs as well, and then support students in their their job search. Great. So I'll go ahead and kick us off with some of our content. Great. So as you're here, I'm sure you're aware that there's so many things that psychology students can do, psychology majors. Um, I'm a psychology undergrad and I work in education. <laughs> so as a stat says on the side, um, you know, only two thirds of folks are in like a somewhat related career path. Um, you know, so more are only are working somewhat related to what you went to school for than you know, closely related. Um, and sometimes it's helpful to, when you to narrow down what you're interested in by looking at clear cl clusters or clear communities. And I know of psychology students from my life and from a UC that are working in all of those sectors from health and wellness to being financial advisors um, to um, working in corporate to public sector. So, um, and we are going to next talk next about just a design thinking process that can help you kind of narrow that down even further. Um, so you can you know, start to see where you're going to be um, or where you might pivot to. So the career design thinking or design thinking is a creative problem solving approach that's used um, in Stanford and their, their um, MBA program. Um, and so we'll briefly go through each step with a career perspective and career lens. So first, um, we're going to think about empathizing, really understanding the problem and brainstorming those possibilities. What is it that you're interested in? Um, how can you get there and why? So why would you be interested in doing those things for a career? And then really taking a look from the balcony. And we talk a lot um, about this in, um, in the co-op program or when students come back from internships, like how did things go and think of it from a broad perspective. So when you're on the balcony, um, looking over, you're, you can see more versus when you're on the dance floor, you're kind of in the weeds and you're, you're kind of going through it. Um, so taking that broader um, perspective to figuring out what might you not know yet, where's the gap, um, and, and what might you still need to figure out. And so the next step is really defining that. And this is different for every person. I think career is very personal for folks. Um, and so my values or motivating factors are very different from you um, as well. And so we're talking to students and then when really narrowing those down, down to is money the most important thing when you're thinking about your career is um, having a great culture and work environment and being, you know, kind of collegial with your coworkers pretty important um, is, you know, having products at the end of the week um, and that challenge is that something you really want in, in your work as well. And there's certain jobs, positions, industries that lend themselves to supporting that type of work and, and um, matching with your, that value match for you. Next step in this process, and I've seen this in social media recently, just come up a lot. I think a lot of folks have taught, back in the day, I feel like people talk to me about salary and job title, and that was like the main conversation. Um, now I see a lot with Gen Z and millennials, we a better measure really, and we're thinking about work view and life view is 
is this pie? <laughs> Speaking is salary is a piece of it, job title is a piece of it, but then also your physical, mental health, and well being. Um, and and career is not everything. It's not your whole entire life. Um, and so the, this design think thinking piece is also really considering your life view and your career view or work view and um, and what they look like and how they how they fit together and how they might be a bit different. So next step is really ideating when you're kind of moving through. And here, um, my colleague talks about you know, starting small, these live options. So what are things you can do today to help you get to where you wanna be in a year, two years, or when I talk to students who are interested in, in getting a PsyD or a PhD seven years from now, <laughs> um, that will help them continue along the way. And then it's an iterative process. It doesn't stop. Even when you do land that job, I continually, I have to consider it ideate of, you know, how can I prepare myself for the future of work? Um, you know, jobs change, those type of things. And so it's this continuous process as well. And I really like this table because we're all at different spaces within this. And if you, if you go to um, like the thinking area, Oftentimes, like you might be in a space where you think you're interested, but you're not sure, like you don't know anyone that works in the field. Um, so a good thing for you to try might be informational interviews with folks that are in the field and um, really blessing that gap between what you think something is and then what it does look, um, you know, day, day by day as well. Um, or you might be in the other spot or you already know folks that work in the field, you just haven't done the work yet. So I often talk to um, career professionals who are transitioning and, and trying to pivot into something a bit different. And are there projects you can do even in your current work environment um, that can help leverage and get you to where the experience you need to kind of move to that area? Um, or if you have some exposure, you did some of those projects, um, you've already, you know, volunteer maybe in, in the in the in the field or with the, the people that you know you're going to be working with then it's time for um, you to you know, figure out if it's an internship or entry-level job um, in the field and through that really the commitment that in the timing that you have like how much time do you have i think influences some of these things as well um, and then the, the confidence of um, building up your confidence and, and seeing where you are and, and, and reflecting on that a little bit so some other ideas for next step, and when you what we call like prototyping, um, you could browse job listings, kind of see what's out there, um, thinking about it, <laughs> pontificating, as some people say, play the lottery, which I know some of us like to do. I, I uh, at least once once a month <laughs> play the wrong lottery. What if you didn't have to, right? <laughs> Um, and these are a little bit passive, right? I mean, you're not you're only browsing, you're not necessarily applying, you're not taking that next step. And so some other things you can do that um, are a bit more active are participating in ev innovative events or just events and panels that are related to your career. So I've had psychology students recently that want to be lactation consultants, but they don't know any lactation consultants. So the most impactful thing they did this semester was go to a career panel of folks um, that are lactation consultants and supporting women in their childbirth. Um, obtaining credentials is another good one. And so there's tons of great things on LinkedIn learning that um, students have free access to with their UC credentials. Um, you could blog about it and connect with other folks. I've seen that definitely happen as well. Um, students that are considering that entrepreneurial path or can, um, becoming a subject matter expert in an, in an area. Offering your services. So I'm getting a master's in instruction design technology. I don't have a ton of um, experience from our portfolio. So I've been working on some side projects to, to build that up. Um, so I can graduate, but then also get the credentials and the practice as well. And then of course, informational interviews. I've seen those be so impactful and really um, help provide some active steps and positive um, you know, next step four is to give you ideas about what to do next um, based on, on those things and prototyping. I encourage you to brainstorm a couple ideas if you are considering you know, pivoting or moving out of the position you're in or even thinking about where you are in your, your career or your job search. We're a, real, a big proponent on goal setting. I'm sure you've heard of SMART goals um as well um and it really helps you test too and gives you that that time time frame you can put it on your calendar you can put it on your to-do list so that's really why i like smart goals i can see if i've met them or if i need to, to um 
to, to, to like reword it and rework it as well. And here's just an idea of um, some things that, you know, meeting two professionals in the current in the current uh, role that you're interested in. And then figure out from there, what are some skills you could gain um, to help get you experience and um, say you have something to offer um, as well throughout the, the interview process and that job search process. Um, we pulled from Designing Your Life, um, the, the book, a lot of the information I'm talking about does. Um, journaling is part of the piece that they, that they say to do, but I do like the concept of um, thinking about the work that you're doing and um, what drains you and what fills your bucket. And so they, they have this fuel gauge over here. And so when are you engaged and when you have high energy, really when you're thinking about the activities that you do at work, the work environment itself, interactions you have, the folks that you're working with, um, the objects that you're working with, and then also clients or users, right? And so looking at the tasks and responsibilities you have throughout the day, and even when you're thinking about your own career and where you kind of might go, and um, it's not really linear, but where you might pivot throughout throughout life, is really thinking about where you're engaged and what you like to do and do more, doing more of that as well. And it's really a if you've ever heard of strengths class, it's like a strengths-based way of kind of looking at your career path as well. Um, and then one last thing that we like philosophically when we think about career, um, ikaga, it's a, it's a Japanese concept. It's reason for being. And you might have heard of folks say the old adage of like, follow your passions, don't work a day in your life. Well, we're not necessarily saying that, right? <laughs> we're saying like, think about what the world needs. Think about what you can get paid for because you need to get paid. And if I, if you asked me when I was 20 what my passion was, I would have said playing basketball. And there's no way anyone would ever pay me to play basketball. It's just not going to happen, right? Um, but then, so what are you good at? And then what do you love? Like, what's that part of the thing that you're engaged that um, you like, you actually like, you enjoy doing, maybe being an advocate for others or what that looks like. And you could see some of your values in there. And then seeing where those things, you know, th those merge. And I've seen, um, and that actually helps some folks when they really figure out that they want to work with their with their passion and figure out how their skills can mix in there, what they can get paid for. I've seen biomedical engineering students ending up in industrial design, and they they were cyclists, and so um, they worked for uh, cycling companies. And like normally, you wouldn't get a biomedical engineer to do that. I was talking to an account uh, an accounting grad at UC um, just last week who works at ESPN, and he's a content management creator did nothing with digital media prior to, <laughs> prior to graduating, but leveraged you know, learning some upskilling on his own, getting his network set. Now he's worked at ESPN for a decade. So, um, but a lot of that was related to kind of thinking about all of these things and being able to tell his story. So I'm gonna pitch it next <laughs> to, um, to my colleague Taylor, who's gonna talk about some of our resources here as well, you see. Perfect. Thanks, Susie. Uh, so like Susie mentioned, I am going to share some of the tangible resources that the University of Cincinnati offers both to current students and alumni through our career studio. Perfect. We have four professional career coaches and six peer career coaches who are actually co-op 2.0 students on campus. Uh, we all work to help students discover and answer questions about the career development process uh, and help train you in specific tools that, that we know about, that we employ, that we use in order to help you move through this process. Uh, we serve both undergraduate and graduate students as well as alumni, um, mainly in the eight colleges that I have listed on this slide. However, um, if you are looking for some support, know that uh, you are welcome to come to us. Typically, we're not turning folks away. It's just that there are other pockets of resources at the University of Cincinnati as well. So, for instance, uh, the Leonard College of Business has a career center um, in addition to the work that we do. We offer one on one professional career coaching. So these career coaching appointments really provide in depth support uh, for students who are walking through their career development process, as well as alumni. All of our coaches are assigned by major. So, as I mentioned in my introduction, I am assigned to psychology students and alumni. So if you were to schedule a career coaching appointment, chances are it would be with me. 
Um, and all of our appointments are scheduled through Handshake, which is the university's career platform online. Um, I know that we're going to share some additional information about how to leverage Handshake a little bit later on in this presentation. We also offer peer career coaching on more of a convenient drop in um, as needed basis during walk in hours. Right now, most of our coaching is happening virtually. We do have some in person opportunities, um, but definitely in the fall when we return uh, for the, the semester, we'll have a little bit more in person capacity, I believe. And next, I'm going to talk a little bit about some of the content and some of the things that we can do in our coaching appointments. So our office does conduct personality and career assessments. Myself, as, a, as well as a couple of colleagues of mine, are certified to deliver both the Myers-Briggs type indicator as well as the strong interest inventory. And these two assessments really help you understand your values, skills, and interests, uh, potentially how you feel energized, how you receive information. Um, and then it helps us to walk through and narrow down some potential career paths that could be considerations for you based on a very robust uh, data set that both of these assessments take into account. And uh, it's a good place to start, especially if you are thinking about all of those different career clusters that we've already talked about, and you're just not quite sure where to begin. They are free, I should mention that as well. They're free for all UC students and alum. We also do a lot of occupational research coaching. So once you have identified a particular area of interest or a particular occupation or occupations and want to learn a little bit more, there's so many ways to do this to really get that good tangible information. Uh, one of the ways you can see here on the screen, we use the Occupational Outlook Handbook a lot. It is through the U.S. Bureau of Labor Statistics. We also utilize a tool called ONET online that we can walk you through. And we have a couple of other tools that help you understand just in general what types of career paths could be suitable for your major, potential strategies for success in those occupations, typical grad programs that people can pursue. And then we also coach around a lot of informational interviewing. So I know that Susie mentioned that some of her students had never um, interfaced before with a lactation consultant, right? And that you can learn so much by talking to people who are currently in that career field. And that truly it's one of the best forms of networking. So we can help you get started with those things as well. We also support students with any facet of their job search. So this could be your documents, resume, CV, cover letter, elevator pitch, uh, the you know technical pieces of where to look for jobs, how to prepare for interviews. We do a lot of mock interviewing as well. So getting folks really comfortable and confident walking in the door at that interview. And then once you receive a job offer, what is appropriate in terms of negotiation, walking through that with us or with someone else during your own process can be really helpful just as a method of feedback, bounce ideas off of someone, kind of understand best practices. So know that we can help with all of those things. And then just a few other resources that we're excited to offer for students after college. Uh, one of them is professional portraits. And I know that this sounds kind of lighthearted on the surface, but it's actually one of our most utilized resources. We are really excited to provide the Iris photo booth, which is actually what this photo is of. It is in our career studio. It does professional portraits, really high quality without a photographer. So you are actually your own photographer. Um, you can make sure they, they look exactly how you want them to, and then it emails you your images right away. Uh, those are right now being scheduled by appointment only just because of health and safety reasons, but those are free. We also have JCPenney suit up events, and these are partnerships with JCPenney to offer students, alumni, even family and friends a really great discount on professional wear. Uh, those do also look a little bit different right now, given the current environment, but we are hoping to have those back in person uh, sooner rather than later. 
Um, they have happened both in the fall and the spring in the past, and they are publicized widely through handshake. And then last but not least, definitely staying connected with UC alumni. I see your mouth moving, but I can't hear you. I think you're muted. <laughs> I swear. You'd think I would get it by now. Sorry, you all. Um, I'm going to talk about a topic that often strikes fear in people's hearts when they hear the word networking. You know, everyone thinks of awkward conversations at uh, happy hours or cocktail events, and it can be that, but there's lots and lots of other ways to network as well. Many of them are virtual, which sometimes people feel more comfortable with. But um, some of the things that you might want to consider are professional organizations and associations in the field that you're interested in working. A lot of times you can go as a guest um, to a meeting or certainly now with virtual meetings, I'm sure there's lots of opportunity. It gives you a feel for what people that are working in the field are doing. Um, the kinds of jobs that are available, opportunities that are available, and there also might even be an opportu opportunity for some mentorship. Um, you can think about meetup work, uh, meetup groups, I'm sorry, uh, and also gig and part time work, which helps you to maybe work in a field uh, sort of a, as an experiment to see if it's what, you know, it's, it's basically like trying on a job and seeing if it's the right fit. Um, I'm going to talk a little bit more about LinkedIn alumni groups. Um, you may or may not know about Bearcats Connect. That's an alumni tool through the UC Alumni Association, a great platform for connecting, for learning about jobs, for learning about what alums are up to, where they're working, and, and again, perhaps making a connection there. They are also um, just now doing some testing work with some mentoring programs. Uh, right now, I think they're doing it with the UC bands, but I think they plan to expand that. Uh, you can also, you know, in that vein of trying on jobs to see how things fit, um, you can think about doing volunteer work or even doing a job shadowing um, type program, which, you know, similar to those informational interviews, it allows you to um, step inside the shoes of that position that you're interested in for a day or for, you know, a period of time to see if it's the right fit. Next slide. So um, professional Profiles, um, as Taylor mentioned, you see uh, is uh, utilizes Handshake. Uh, I have to say that I use Handshake every day in my job. I work with employers and there are hundreds and hundreds of employers that list jobs on Handshake, internships, full-time jobs, co-op positions, all kinds of things. Um, so they are, uh, partnering with UC and these employers have selected the University of Cincinnati as a partner school. So they're already predisposed to like you and want to uh, connect with you because of the reputation of the uh, University of Cincinnati and our graduates. Um, so I would encourage you to take a look at your handshake profile and get it in a, you know, a great shape so you can use that tool. It's um, like I said, it's a great platform and a great tool. Um, and there are lots and lots of positions. And what I will tell you is look through those positions. I know it's a lot to look for, but there often are a lot of positions that have zero applicants. So just by virtue of doing some sleuthing and searching and, um, you know, looking on handshake, you're, you're likely to find some positions where you might not have a lot of competition and you uh, at the very least will likely get an interview, which is great practice. LinkedIn, again, I, I hear from students and some alum, you know, it's like, mm, do people really use LinkedIn? Actually, LinkedIn is a very robust um, platform for networking. Again, one of those virtual um, platforms where you don't necessarily have to um, feel awkward putting yourself out there face to face. Um, there is a UC alumni LinkedIn page. You can join that and have access to 
Uh, I can't remember how many members it has. I may have it pulled up here. There's a lot. Um, let's see. I, I can't, I can't tell right off the top. Oh, 21,000 members. There we go. And so there are 21,000 alums on this LinkedIn page who are interested. They've already stated they're interested in engaging with UC students, UC alum, other UC alum, um, keeping in contact with professors and faculty and staff. And so I encourage you at the very least to join that particular LinkedIn page. And um, I would also encourage you to get creative with your link, your own LinkedIn profile. Um, I think one of the best things you can do is um, use your headline, the, the blurb that comes up with your picture. That's the first thing that uh, employers and other colleagues will see. Catch their attention with a nice photo and then use that opportunity in your headline to instead of just saying, I'm looking for an entry level position in XYZ, put your dream out there. Um, talk about uh, those things that Susie mentioned um, earlier in the presentation, what you're passionate about, what you love doing, what you, you know, what you want to bring to the world um, and make it, you know, make it an exciting headline that invites um, employers, colleagues, other networking people to want to learn more about you. And then I'll say one last thing about networking. Think about your network organically and not just as one of those chores that you have to do. Your network is anyone and everyone you know. It's your friends, it's your faculty members, it's uh, teachers you had in high school, it's friends of your parents. Um, there's always someone in your circle and your sphere of influence who you can reach out to uh, to talk to and connect with, and you know they can connect you to the right person for the next step on your journey. So I encourage you again, as a non awkward way to network, to think about people that are already in your circle that you know and you can talk to about what your plans are, what your dreams are, what your goals are, and how. Um, how you hope that they can uh, help you get there. And the thing is too, with like LinkedIn and Handshake and, and talking to people you know, um, people are on those kinds of platforms because they want to connect and they want to network and they wanna reach out and they wanna help. And so keep that in mind um, when you're starting your network journey. Uh, it's helpful to, to come at it from the mindset of, um, I'm not asking people for a favor and it's a burden. It's that's why they put their profile out there or their job posting out there. They want to connect with you and they want to talk to you. So go out there and network and get them. And maybe we'll think of a better term for networking. So it doesn't sound so icky. I agree. That's often what comes to my mind is someone said the happy hour example. That's what always comes <laughs> to my mind is just like awkward having to make conversations. So I think those are all really helpful um, tips and ideas and ways, you know, to get out of that sort of standard networking that we that we think about. Awesome. Well, thank you guys so much um, for that awesome presentation. Um, I know I've talked with students about these things before and I learn something every time I hear you guys talk. Um, about this, I'm going to shut off this recording part as we sort of move into a more